He has a long history in horse racing. He was once a jockey, then he clocked horses for the official race book, and finally he joined the ranks of trainers. He took some time off from horse racing, to discover himself, but the passion of being around horses saw him return to the stables. He is Donovan Thompson, a well-spoken, and open individual, who is not afraid to tell it like it is. Thompson in a no-holds-bar interview on QuickGallop.com and its YouTube channel, The Quick Galloper, digs deep into his lifetime narrative. This is one interview you cannot afford to miss. True. You have been at the shop for a very, very long time, yeah, in a number of capacities. Tell us how it all started. How did Donovan Thompson first come to Cayman Park? First, coming and racing in 1974, go on a trainer named Alvin Martin down at Newland, and then we go run for King Ann, Juna King Ann, get an apprentice license for me mm -hmm. in 1976. We get an apprentice license when we are 13. 13 plus when I go to Calabar. And it does move from there, I get a broken foot when I weigh 97 pounds. I ride a couple of horses, but when I weigh 97 pounds, I get my foot break. And when the plaster cut off my foot, I weigh 147. And I just one half, I ride back after that. And then I try the next thing in a racing, I go be a clap man for track and pool. All right, we don't want to go there so quick because. I mean, you have gone a far way already, so let us slow up a little bit. Yeah. So you came down, you got your apprentice license at 13? 13, 13 plus. 13 plus? Yeah. And you were going Calabar High at the time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I and did have to work some ass in the early morning. I have to leave to reach school by 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Take the Sun Enterprise bus. Catch back the same bus. If I don't catch a trainer, we are come down in the evening. If I come work ass in the evening, so them time they me did small. Right. And people never had no say me I go get so big. And I ride a couple of horses, Queen of Spade was one of my favourite horses. She a white flame I learned for ride off her. And off her King Anne, me get injured. And King Anne treatment never right. Mm -hmm. I made have a leaf around him and go around Philip Art. I go around Philip Art and Philip Roth introduced me to Billy Williams and I started work out for the great legal light. When the great legal light I prepared for the derby, I used to gall him up. I used to melt and red road, I used to look after him. Mm -hmm. And he used to put me on him for ride him come a track. And the trainer just make me work him and him like how I work him. Then time they are Patrick Lynch, the apprentice. So there's no legal light without Donovan Thompson? Yeah, then time they used to call legal light Mr. Morgan before he race. And then in race and I still work him. I learned me to prepare for the habit. Mm -hmm. Trainer met me and get him up for a mile. Him and Grishan Fable. Wacky Lynch up and Grishan Fable. And me up and legal like the two of them get up for a mile. Mm -hmm. I remember them things. I used to work. So I learned all the things from them big trainer there. From them time there. And then my foot broke. We are 97 pounds. But me a man that loves my belly. Me can't stand <laughs> hungry. So, when the plaster cut off my foot, we weigh 147. Mm -hmm. I sweat and ride one ass, I ask name Commitment. And I have a program and next ass to ride named Tumbleweed. And I couldn't take the pressure. Because I can't um, resist the food. Yeah, yeah. And I just call it quit. So, how, how long did you ride for? <laughs> ride less than a year. Yeah. And then my foot get broke and everything just changed from, from there. Did you, manage, did you manage any winners? No, I never had win a race. Peace any? Run. Yeah, my place my ass. Okay. And one day I fried Queen of Spade. She had a win. My ass named Bad Royal. I ran fall for you all day. And cancel me? And cancel the race me. Jesus. So I just tell myself, say, you know, look like the jacket thing are my thing. Yes. So I just, you know, go and exercise some more still. I take a work with track and pool. Mm -hmm. And I start track ass with track and pool. When I feel like working with track and pool and being an assistant to Mr. Eunice, I think I, I'm the two best part of racing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how long did you work pool? for track and pool? 
I work for Chuck and Paul when Howard Abrams was the manager for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I think we do a successful job because when we start working with Chuck and Paul, the first time run at them, then we just struggle with them. And you could identify and, yeah, them? Yeah, I'm going to go there and identify them and start. Make them select some winners and the book starts thrive and yeah, the boss deal with me good them time there. Mm -hmm. And Chuck and pull the well over that period of time there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then a man named Mark Earlo introduced me to Mr. Eunice. And first me the cage, me never had one go because me have a different perspective of them big trainer they used to deal with people and when we go around them, I find out say, a different thing. I'm start working with Mr. Eunice 2003. And we're talking about Andrew Eunice. No, Baba Eunice. Oh, Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. Anthony, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the opportunity to learn around him. He teach me when he can teach me, me understand the rudiments of how to take care of ass. Different fans just say ass and just deal with him. Mm how -hmm. to manage a stable. I learned them things from him. He gave me the opportunity to learn all of them things. And I be my assistant for five years mm -hmm. before I go to the trainer school. And when I go to the trainer school, I learn a different thing about us, how to prepare us nutrition. Different fans throw some feeding in our pan and mm -hmm. get us. I learned them things there. And after I learned them things, you know, I get a trainer license in 2009. Mm -hmm. And the first two horses I run, I win with them. Who were those horses? Earth, Wind and Fire and Fire Ever Mine. Mm -hmm. And from there, I just took up the training thing. And when I get the trainer license, I still work with Mr. Eunice. And then I get some horses. I mean, I have to pay more attention to them as To your personal yeah. horses now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so me time I give me some units a break and then I have some horses. But, but stick a pin, stick a pin. Your first two horses you won with them as a trainer. Yeah, man. My mm -hmm. name is Maris Finn mm -hmm. by Earth, Wind and Fire and give me for training. And when I buy me, I have attendant. And a lot of people say he can't race. I waste time. I'm telling him, no man, I fix up the ass. I fix him up and prepare him. When I got trained at school, I tell all the trainers in my class. I say, I'm going to be the first man to win a race out of all of you. Because I prepare this ass for when I graduate, I have a race to put him in. And I go win. We graduate Thursday evening. I look about my license Friday. And it's Saturday morning, I nominate him. And win with him Wednesday. Earth, Wind and Fire, won by Naris Finn. Who were some of your batteries like when you graduated? Fitzroy Gillespie, Borel, Nicholas Edwards, Patrick Taylor, Pat Charlton, mm -hmm. and Lambada, Ryan Matthews, Cleveland Mitchell. I'm not to remember everybody off the bat right now, but mm -hmm. those were some of the people where me and them used to be close, you know? But what was the feeling like? I mean, hitting them two winners right off the bat. Why, when we win them two years, you know, a lot of people had promised me some asses and it never materialized. Mm -hmm. And then, we start training some asses now for a man where he does make peer promises and then the money never go right. And me and him would have to end up split. Mm -hmm. So, all my life it get threatened. And I just cool out for a little while and then I come back. Where you call a little while? Like about three, four years. Mm -hmm. I don't have nothing to do with no ass. And then some people say, boy, I have to go back in a racing because a racing me learn. And then I come back and go around Mr. Nunes and help him to win him first championship. Mm -hmm. And I'm a apprentice master, so me always ready, ready to do anything when him asks me to do. Mm -hmm. Like right now, me help him sadly the asses a race day time. And then my bridging, I have a little two little mirror down a bushy park and me help him with them. 
and bread Eva Jalen. And he said, Boy, you have to train her now. And I come back and we start tra training her from scratch until we win a race with her and me, me have her and me have this next one until Mr. Fisher gave me two, two years worth of training the other day. And so I end up at four races now. Okay. We still I get a lot of promises. But you know, we just have to keep your finger crossed because we know we learn it from scratch. We learn it around big trainer, little trainer. So you learn every little thing. So you can manage over everything. You can manage off of your own. You never get involved with the commission. Where me give Anything negative. That, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me get a lot of kudos to how me deal with asses. But me just a wait for my time because I know my time will come. I book up on a own and we are going to give me the opportunity to train some good ass. And I know I have the ability to do it. So I just a wait for my time. Do you um, keep close tabs on all your horses? Yeah, man, because the best thing that you know are your eyes train a race ass. Because you can look on him and know when he's not happy. Them can't tell you when they feel pain, you know. And you have to just know when they get sick. Uh, look, when I was an assistant to Mr. Nunes and the virus said that go around, remember a virus the way that kill the ass and kill quiet strength and some whole heap of big ass. Yeah. Mr. Nunes never lose an ass in a them time there, you know. And why he never lose an ass in a them time there? I talk to Dr. Marsh, a man that I respect, down to the ground where I walk from. Uh, Dr. Marsh told me the symptoms when we look out for and when we see them symptoms eh, the faster we move to it, mm -hmm. the better for the ass. And we just start sleep as stable and get up and check the asses them and know certain ass where certain time them for finish feed. I not see them I eat them feeding them time. Eh. Me just check them for fever. Find out say yeah, I fever you take time and get so I have to just give them some antibiotic and things where they forget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it so happened that when you see the asses, them stay them with it, them can't go attract the work. So you just inform the trainer, say, trainer, them two are taking sick last night, them can't work. So they don't get to go attract. Because if they go attract at them time, they right. go drop down and dead. Mm -hmm. And during that period, them, Safiani just drive coming out of the table one day and say, Moana, no, what you are doing? You make none of them asses and all them. <laughs> I mean, explain to him, and maybe I don't go up a film stable because I never lose no more ass mm -hmm. during the time, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, the boy, they never know me so intelligent towards us. But me learned some things from Mr. Nunes when he tell me, say, your eyes, your eyes, very important. You have to can look on the ass, know say the ass, they mean a change. Mm -hmm. So, I me, me retain them things there in my head. So, when I come me there, when I come back now and start training, I'll get the opportunity to train back as now. June and small, I'm the only man they're willing to lend me to stall. My friend, you know? Mm -hmm. And I write so I still the same way. So, how has this period been for you as a trainer? Well, you know, we know it's rough, it's never easy. But you just have to just. Just go and do your thing and just work for your best. Last year when you won with Ava yeah, Jalen, really. it was very emotional for you. Yeah, man, because at the first ask me really, and me care go put her put out her mother. And when she born and I grow, me watch her grow in her pen. And when me care come a track and take her off her trailer, the man asked me, where me I go with that boat kid? And me tell him, say, no, where on yourself, man, she had a win with her track and me couldn't see. So I did feel a special way about her. Mm -hmm. So when you say emotional, yeah, because the one I'd say, I me have to come and track on race her. So he did feel a way to me, you know? And he gave me the opportunity to look after me and them down on the farm and bread two more asses. Mm -hmm. And them asses soon come and track again. Because this one, uh, one of them where me that to do that. Mm -hmm. I gain so much experience over time when I feel like if I get the opportunity to train Go some horses. nice horses, I mm -hmm. can do well. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like my time soon come because I have two local healing where I have high hopes for them. So I just give myself the time 
for just wait for them. Because patience is a virtue, you know. Because if you don't have patience, you can't get nothing out of us. Since you've been your trainer, and I mean, it's a long time, from the 70s, who would have been some of the trainers that, you know, would have inspired you? Why, Billy Williams, the main man. Because I go around him as a little youth and learn so much from him. The great Paul, Paul Newman, the past and gone. I learn things from them and because I'm a little boy and I work off with them. And you have a lot of trainers in high track right now, like all Patrick Lynch, Gary Sobrati, Mr. Siani. I learn a whole heap of things from them and by just talking to them and they get to them ideas and just sit down and look for them and say, boy. And the great Ralph Zay, they were passing on with him. I spent some time around him as a little youth work ass. Because when I was a little youth, you know, I would just work as enough trainer. You know, no matter the ass. Because mm -hmm. I would come from school at evening time, come work as it's for all Larry Ozzy, a man named Freddie Chinlai. A man used to bring them asses come at track. A man named Herbert Chin. He was a trainer at the Chaibal Chief. And uh, Igor Wise and them asses. Eh? Armando Ennis. I learn all the things from them and they have a little youth. So them things are still in my head. So I come now and I see some little youth that ride ass boat and I try to teach them what I know to help them. That's what the game is about. Passing yeah, man, on the right now the youth are named Linton Stedman. Poor dime as a youth because he try to go in high riding school early and he never get the opportunity to wait. And I sit him down and talk to him and tell him, say, you have to just dedicate yourself to me out. And just try and make certain when the riding school come in the next two, three years time, you have a weight where you can go in it. So when I see him do well, I feel good about that because I know me would have, have him around me. Give me half his key and tell him to stay right as so. I get involved with nobody, just try to train and get half a weight. Mm -hmm. Where I still love to see him do that right now. Because I know if him just lose some more weight, he will get more rides. Because I have the rider. ability to be a top, top class rider. jockey. Mm -hmm. And I wrote Mr. Nunes. We learn all of them things and get him to be what he is today. Mm -hmm. How many winners have you had so far in your training career? You know, a 20 had. Mm -hmm. You know, remember exact how much, but I think a 20 had. I know I've gone over 20. Mm -hmm. And I believe. I win a race with some ass, we no race back. Like an ass named Siomoto. I remember when the doctor looked at him one day, the doctor told me, he said, Trainer, give up on this ass. I said, no, that I think I'm going to win a race with him. And I end up winning a race with him. And when I win with him. That's it. He can't walk. You drain everything out of him. two weeks. <laughs> I really drain everything out of him. But he needs them. Right. It's gone, mm -hmm. but he does win the race for me. Uh, and most of the artists when I when win the race with... Problematic. Yeah. I get an artist named Dan Almighty. Them say he can't race back. And I bring him around Jonah Small and we're there with him. And we win three races with him and run seven seconds. And this is the artist where them say he can't race back. And, and he's still around. And he's still, still around, around right yeah. now. Is that, coincidentally, is that probably one of your greatest achievements as a trainer? Yeah, I believe that, you know, because Andrew Donalds, I give thanks to the youth the every day. He give me the opportunity, he call me and said to me, say, you want the ass? And I said, yeah, man. As a man that has been around Cayman as for a while and seen all the horses, basically race and so on. Who do you think are some of the best horses you have seen at Cayman as, or the best one? Well, if you pick out the best one, it's hard because I see a lot of great horses. I see Rimsky, I see Indian Flame, Eras, Legal Light, She's a Man Eater, she has named Fairy Queen, Thunderbird, I'm going to great asses, I say Reprieve, Appeal Court. This is some great asses, Ash Grove, Baladier. See all of them asses there. 
But me feel like the best ass when me see Racer came on as part of the and Eras. And you know why me say Eras are the best ass, me see? Eras run track record. For most of the journey, them where Eras run from came on as part. Eras. Run track record was straight five, run track record was five and a half, run track record was six, run track record was six and a half. Seven. So uh, that's why me rate Eras as one of the best ass. Legal Light was a tough campaigner uh, where he beat up the ass with 133 pounds and uh, some little light ass can beat him. But I think Eras was a special ass. Because how he build, how he look, and how he perform, uh, he was my champion. Eras, uh, he was my champion. And Just likewise, see how the track record when he run. And likewise, trainer, what about jockeys? Jackies, me feel like the greatest Jackie Mr. Ryder came on as part near Jardos. But you have Emilio Rodriguez, Mr. Richard De Paz, Mr. Ose Bravo, Mr. Drew Mercer, a great Drew Mercer, where come and come teach Winston Griffiths. And him himself, Winston Griffiths himself, said that. Me see that, me see Lester Pigat. But me feel like Jardos, the best Jackie me ever see Ryder has. Who are some of the persons? that you would like to shout out to and, and, and give thanks? Well, the first man I need to give shout out to, you know, the man named Anthony Baba Yunis, you know, because he gave me the opportunity to learn around him, you know, hide nothing from him, teach me everything when he can teach me. And I have all heap of people like, right now, Naris Finn, the man who gave me the, my first winner for train. Right now, the man who has trained them ass is a fan now. Man named Leroy Douglas. The man they look up on me and give me asses to train me. I have to respect them people. Eh. Mr. Fisher give me two asses to train now. And the youth and the Andrew Danaz, I love him. Like my brother. I have a man there right now named Barrington Bernard. I have all the respect for them and they just told them and they deal with us and how me and them and the reason about us. Juna Smile, my friend, a man named Paul Suki. We did it for me every day. When things high, when things low, the man did it for me every day. And my groom, when I have a work with me, Dale Wallace, a man you don't have to tell nothing two times. Just tell him one time, and I eat that. He make it work easier for me. If a man will take care of him, ask him, anything when he wrong, he's not afraid to say, trainer, this, and he can't get along with him. You have a lot of grooms so I respect to. Milton Redwood, the man where I found me a little youth. The man that they around me and try to teach me everything where make me learn all the things from him, how to take care of ass and them things. The first man as a groom when me did the round, the man named, they remember what angling in name. Wrote down Mr. Martin. Then tell them Mr. Martin they are new land. I rate them and I respect them and I have to give Mark Earl a big up to because Mark Earl was the man who bring me around Mr. Nunes. And you have only people, me and I call them names, but I have only people in a racing when I respect and honor them. Mr. Man, I respect the groom them. Because without groom, you know, nobody will take care of your asses. So I might take that. Yes, Trina. So I want to. Thank you for sharing your life story with us and to wish you all the best as we go forward. Yeah, thanks and I hope this can help me gain some more asses, you know? People understand who Danavan Thompson is. Yeah, Respect. Man. Respect. Thank you for watching another video produced by the team from quickgallop.com, YouTube channel, The Quick Galloper. Please stay on the channel for more enlightening videos on those involved in local horse racing. Please like, subscribe, and press the notification bell.